Joining me now to talk more about this is Democratic Congresswoman Judy Chu, whose district includes Monterey Park. Uh, and we'll get to that in a second, Congresswoman. But I first want to ask you uh, about this uh, news roiling the bank industry right now. You're part of the California delegation. I'm sure uh, you have constituents that are impacted by this. You sit on the Small Business Committee. What's your reaction to the collapse of these uh, two banks and, and how the administration has responded? It's really shocking that this happened. Uh, Silicon Valley Bank was uh, the second largest bank failure uh, in history uh, ever since the 2008 Washington Mutual Bank collapse. And so um, it uh, is so important to make sure that uh, the depositors are made whole and that uh, and, and that also uh, there is no taxpayer liability, that there isn't, in fact, a bailout. So that's why yesterday I was on a Treasury briefing with members of Congress. They assured us that taxpayers would not bear the burden. And, in fact, that they were going to make sure that all de the depositors were made whole. They are also going to have a liquidity fund so that they can also take care of other banks that could possibly be in the same situation. Uh, they also said that uh, the saying Silicon Valley Bank was um, a regional bank catering to high risk tech startups and they uh, were reliant on low interest rate lending to stay in business. Uh, so uh, they were a somewhat isolated example Nonetheless, they are keeping a close eye on the other banks so that uh, we can make sure that our financial system is as strong as it can be. Is there anything else you'd like to see the administration do at this point, or do you think this, these at least these short-term decisions will be enough? Well, I would like to see uh, the Dodd-Frank bill uh, reinstated to uh, what it was in, it, in its entirety at the beginning after the bank failures of 2008. The initial Dodd-Frank bill would have included banks like the Silicon Valley Bank. It would have subjected them to the stress tests that would ensure that the bank is holding could withstand financial pressure. But in 2018, uh, the Trump administration lobbied to change this so that banks like Silicon Valley were actually exempted. And that's why we're in the situation that we're in now. This this bank must be made to be included in the Dodd-Frank reforms. Okay, let's uh, turn now to the issue of gun violence, something I know you've been uh, working on. You and Congresswoman Issue, who uh, represents Half Moon Bay, introduced a resolution honoring the lives lost in those two shootings. Why was it important to you, and how is your community healing seven weeks later? It was beyond shocking to wake up uh, during the beginning of our Lunar New Year to the fact that a gunman had gone into a dance studio shooting 11 people and wounding uh, nine others. And uh, as a result, the whole community is shattered. Uh, I have been meeting with the victims' families and uh, they are still recovering from this. Uh, the wounded are still uh, uh, prevent it from going back to work and, in fact, uh, really wonder about whether they can go back to work eventually. So there is so much recovery that needs to happen. And that's why President Biden's visit is so important. Uh, the whole community is still stunned and we need the leader of the United States to come and help in the healing process of this community which for so many decades was considered a very peaceful community, but that peace has been shattered. And now we need to have uh, the top leader to console these folks so that we can indeed begin the process of healing. Yeah, and I understand uh, the benefit of having the president there for, for the healing process to show that he cares and he's connected to the community. But what more do you think President Biden can do to prevent an awful tragedy like this happening in the future? He's called for an assault weapons ban. That seems unrealistic in this Congress. Is there anything specific that you'd like to see the president do uh, to try and rein in this crisis we have uh, of mass shootings in the United States? Well, he has called for the assault weapons ban, and I just have to emphasize how, how strongly we need it. Uh, regardless 
of whether it can be done today or tomorrow, we have to keep on calling for it. Look, this shooter went into the dance studio with a semi-automatic pistol, but he had a high capacity magazine, which allowed him to shoot 42 times in a matter of minutes. That's why 11 people were killed. This was an assault weapon. And that is why uh, we have to stop this. Uh, and in fact, there have been 107 mass shootings since the beginning of the year. Enough is enough. Mm -hmm. And so President Biden's voice is very important in this but also in many other kinds of things that we can do. For instance, um, red flag laws could have alerted us to the mental deterioration of this shooter. But I would say that many communities don't know of its existence, especially immigrant communities like this one. Mm -hmm. And so actually I'm working on a bill to make sure that there is actual outreach to all kinds of communities uh, to let them know about the red flag laws, but also that it's done in language so mm -hmm. that we can have more people reporting on these folks. All right, Congresswoman uh, Judy Chu, a busy couple of days for you with the president uh, in your district. Thank you so much for being here. We appreciate it. Thanks for watching our YouTube channel. Follow today's top stories and breaking news by downloading the NBC News app.